hello students welcome back to the class this is session number 2 for chapter 1 environment geography class 7 this is in continuation to the session 1 so in order to have a better understanding you need to go through session 1 first and then you can come back to this video so today we are going to cover the remaining topics number 6 natural environment number 7 domains of the environment number 8 biosphere number 9 ecosystem and number 10 human environment so let us now understand what is a natural environment you might see that the natural environment is land water air plants and animals but this is only half true let us understand why the natural environment refers to all living and non living things occurring naturally without any artificial interference artificial interference could be for example humans modifying the natural landscape and converting the forest into agricultural land and planting crops what is to be noted here is that crops are still plants but it is artificially planted by humans so this cannot be considered as a natural environment some animals however do build things to provide a better environment for themselves for example beaver dams and mount building termites both of these are an example of a totally natural environment so i hope i have cleared your doubts in this so let's move on to the next topic which is domains of the environment or it is also called as earth spheres so everything in earth system can be placed into four major subsystems that is land water living things or air these four subsystems are called as spheres to simplify lithosphere that is the land or solid earth hydrosphere hydro means water so all the water found on under and over the surface of the earth comes under hydrosphere biosphere that is all life on earth or the living things comes under biosphere atmosphere that is the air is formed by the gases that surround the earth let's not dive in little further into lithosphere so lithosphere is also called as geosphere sometimes and it refers to all the rocks of the earth the solid crust or the hard top layer of the earth it is made up of rocks minerals and covered by a thin layer of soil the surface of the lithosphere is very uneven there are high mountain ranges like the great himalayas and the rockies huge plains or flat areas and deep valleys along the ocean floor moving on to hydrosphere the water on the earth surface such as lakes seas ocean and rivers forms the hydrosphere do you know that only a small portion of the water in the hydrosphere is fresh that is non salty and that too is in the frozen form and rest of the 97% of the earth's water is salty atmosphere it is a thin layer of the air that surrounds the earth it consists of a number of gases dust and water vapors any changes in the atmosphere produces changes in the weather and climate at large the upper portion of the atmosphere protects the organisms of the biosphere from the sun's ultraviolet radiation it also absorbs and emits heat biosphere it is also known as the living world as it contains all the planet's living things this sphere includes all the microorganisms plants and animals of the earth within the biosphere living things form communities based on the physical surroundings of an area these communities are referred as the biomes deserts grasslands and tropical rainforest are three of the many 
types of biomes that exist within the biosphere. Let us discuss biosphere as a next topic in detail. As we are aware now that plant and animal kingdom together forms the biosphere. It is a narrow zone of the earth where land, water and air interacts with each other to support life. Let us now see how the plant and the animal kingdom interacts together along with the other abiotic things. Sunlight is needed by the plants during the process of photosynthesis to convert it into food along with the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and oxygen is released as a byproduct during the process. Subsequently, this oxygen is utilized by all the animals during the process of respiration. And when all these animals die, it is converted into rich nutrient in the soil which later on is absorbed by the plants. And this is how different life forms are interdependent. And there are multiple processes going on side by side. A little change in these processes can be quite catastrophic. And this brings us to the next topic that is ecosystem. An ecosystem includes all the living things that is plants, animals and other organisms in an area interacting with each other and also with the non-living environment such as weather, earth, sun, soil, climate and atmosphere. An ecosystem is a community of living organisms in conjunction with the non-living components of the environment interacting as a system. These biotic and abiotic components are linked together through nutrient cycle and different energy flows. In order to understand ecosystem, let's have a look at the pond ecosystem. The pond surface is an excellent breeding ground for planktons, phytoplanktons or zooplanktons which in turn is a food for fishes. Planktons and other microorganisms are also eaten by insects. Insects in return are eaten by frogs. Ponds support a large variety of animals and plant life such as birds, crayfish, small fishes, frogs, insects, turtle, protozoa, algae and lily pads. All of which comes under the distinct category of producer, consumer and decomposer. The pond's natural cycle begins with the producers and then to the consumers before ending with the decomposers. The pond's ecosystem consists of abiotic and environmental factor and biotic communities of organisms. Abiotic environmental factors of the pond's ecosystem include the temperature, of the water, flow and salinity. The percentage of dissolved oxygen level in the water determines what kind of organisms will grow there. Fish need dissolved oxygen in order to survive. However, anaerobic bacteria will not thrive in an ecosystem formed with dissolved oxygen. Water body salinity may also determine the different species presence. For instance, Marine organisms tolerate salinity, while freshwater organisms will not thrive when exposed to salt. And last topic for the day, human environment. Human beings interact with the environment on day-to-day -day basis and modify it according to their needs. Due to modernization, our needs grew. So we learn new ways to fulfill our needs. We learn to grow crops and create a system wherein transaction take place, for example, barter system, trade and commerce, etc. Furthermore, we gather things as per our demand. For example, to construct a building, we need to draw raw material including rocks and wood. For this, we may look to nature. We can get rocks from the mountains and wood from cutting down our own trees. And that's a wrap for today's session. Thank you for joining. Take care. Bye-bye.